Hi, I'm Eleanor Meyerhofer, a native Californian designer and digital strategist. In October of 1999, a few years after graduating from design school, I flew from San Francisco to Munich with a fistful of Deutschmarks, a dial-up connection, and an extremely vague plan. 20 plus years later, after a 10 year stint at a global agency, freelancing, and launching two online businesses, I'm still here. Now I'm talking to other expat business owners to share knowledge, stories, and inspiration for other non-Germans running businesses in Germany. Today I am here with Genevieve Retzloff, and she's gonna talk to us about her business, Grow Better Together. So Jen, I'll ask the first question I always ask, can you give us the two minute version of how you ended up in Germany and who you are? Yeah, yeah I'm Genevieve, Genevieve or Jen. So most people call me Jen. I'm, what got me into Germany is super interesting and ironic is I met my German husband at the Montreal Oktoberfest. <laughs> 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 so yeah, we lived a little bit in Montreal together for about a year and a half or so. And then he had an opportunity to come to Munich for a job opportunity. And that came right at a time where I was thinking, I need a change. And then I thought, let's do it. <laughs> so we, <laughs> right. we just moved to Germany. I guess I should ask that, like before I ask how you got here. It's, so you are from Montreal. I'm from Montreal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And can I just ask a little bit, why were you needing a change at that point? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, and this also ties in into why I got into self-employment, I guess, is I was just at a place where I wasn't fulfilled, where in my work, I was working, like running after my tail all day long, all evening long, like just felt like I was brrr, stuck in the, mm -hmm. this downward, downward spiral, but it, it didn't know what else to do. And it just hit the wall a little bit. And um, yeah. And what kind of, what was the work you were doing in Montreal? Like what kind of- I was a head of HR. So I had a pretty linear path in mm -hmm. Canada, like in HR, going from coordinator and advisor and business partner. And then I had my own department in the entertainment industry. And, and then becoming an expat kind of gave me the space to take a step back and just look mm -hmm. at how I was doing things and how I was running my life versus where I wanted to be. So tell, so can you tell us like where you are today and the steps that got you there? Like what was your work path once you landed here? Yeah. So, okay. So as I said, I was kind of, I was in a head of HR position mm -hmm. and I just needed a change. So then when I came to Germany, I became a trailing spouse kind yeah, of, like yeah. it's just really that was another reality I wasn't really prepared for somehow. It's like, ah, you have all this status, this salary, financial independence. And I was really an independent person. Like I mm -hmm. bought my first place to my own when I was 26 years old. Oh, wow. I bought a second when I was 30. Like I'm like full on independent financially and socially. And now I came to a country where my husband was from, where I didn't know anyone. I didn't speak the language. I was very isolated and I, I became a training spouse, you know, like yeah, yeah, my husband yeah. would, doesn't like when I say that, but that's really kind of a, the drop, you know? Yeah. And, and then I, I was pregnant. Now looking back, I'm like, this is a good thing. Like just when you're like, mm -hmm. ah, you have this internal panic of what am I going to do? And what is this decision about? Um, then my, my focus changed a little bit. And when my baby was seven months old, I was pregnant again. And that oh, really... Wow. Yeah, I didn't realize I that you have Irish twins, Mexican twins, whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah, totally. seven months. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but it's so good that it happened the way it is because yeah. then that got me where I am today. So just to you know, to mm -hmm. your point, to answer your question, I guess that reshifted my priorities. That gave me like a hell of a step back. You know, I mm -hmm. said I came here and gave me the step back, but having two children in between after three years of reflection really and understanding what are my priorities how do i fit my my life my career my children my mm -hmm. relationship like how does that all tie in and then i was really craving the flexibility and the corporate world didn't match at all what i wanted at that point anymore so that's how i created my business basically so tell us about that business 
Yeah, so Grow Better Together is born in 2018 mm -hmm. uh, out of the idea that the corporate world is going through a massive transition right now, right? And there mm -hmm. are some, some, some of my experience in HR that could help me understand what's going on and help me kind of help people through that transition. And so, yeah, so that's the Grow Better Together really works. I started more as offering HR services and recruiting mm -hmm. services. So I could kind of, first of all, you know, have some, it was my bread and butter until mm -hmm. I could build the coaching skills. Cause that was really my favorite part of HR. HR, I didn't hate HR at all. Mm -hmm. And there were parts that I really enjoyed. So then I thought, let me just build the skills in coaching so I can eventually kind of, you know, balance it out, do a little less of HR consulting and HR uh, recruiting to mm -hmm. build up the coaching skills to really bring people on different levels with different services, but always with this idea to just kind of pull them through in, in this new era where we're finding ourselves in, where people don't want the same things. They don't want to work the same way they've been working all the time. They want more flexibility, they want to be authentic. And that's also the umbrella under which we work. So it's really authenticity is kind of the big chunk of the work we do is bringing leaders to be more authentic than allowing their team members to be more authentic. And so they have a sense of belonging and sense of belonging creates talent retention, uh, which is okay. the secret. <laughs> let me let me back up a sec. So you're yeah. in Germany. You have this big, you know, kind of high power career. You come here. So yeah. you've had a baby and you start this business. So like in between like a, just the logistics of starting the business here. And then how did you, you said, you know, the HR services were sort of your bread and butter, but I'm assuming you had no network here. Like how did you get that off the ground um, yeah. after being pregnant twice and taking a break and landing here with you know, none of the, the structure you had in Canada? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I, I started offering HR and recruiting to my existing network because I still existed with all of my baggage and my background and mm -hmm. I had good connections in Canada that still liked to work with me. And then I thought, well, I'm going to tell them I'm available for projects. Everybody's way over their head. They, they have, mm -hmm. you know, too much work. And so I started offering that to just start, you know, running. <laughs> okay. So and you were working remotely with your clients in Canada from Germany. That's how you got, okay. Got it. Yeah. And then, and then slowly I built my network here. I mean, this is part of the things that I like a lot of people hated, but I really like the networking part. So getting to know people and mm -hmm. getting into, I was getting into HR groups and coaching groups. And so I was really out there everywhere. And so I enjoyed that part. Tell me about that. I have a million questions. So, okay. Yeah. So like starting your business, like the legal aspects of it, was it the business based here? Like, did you start as a, like a freelance proprietor, freelancer? Okay. Yeah. And so then it doesn't matter where your clients are. Okay. I, like, exactly. I work with clients, you know, probably 30% yeah. of my clients are in Germany. Okay. So that's just how you started. So no problems there. And then you yeah. said you joined these groups were these, so 2018, I guess like the couple of years before COVID were these like in-person groups or yeah. Facebook groups or so you were, and where did you find them? I found them on LinkedIn. I found them on Facebook. I guess these are the two main platforms where I okay. find. Yeah. But they were specific yeah. industry groups for HR professionals. Yeah. And then when you, when you get there, also, I wanted to create my own because <laughs> being HR, you need to be familiar with employment laws. And so mm -hmm. I had no clue about employment laws and that was kind of really lacking. So I created my own networking group and then people came and then they told me about other networking groups. Oh. And then when I went to those networking groups, they told me about other. And so this is how, you know, it kind of has a ripple effect. And all of a sudden I'm part of like 10 networking groups. And, and this is how I, I, I started getting more business locally. Ah, uh, okay. And this is, we're in Munich. So that, was this all in Munich yeah. or was it Germany wide? Okay. It was all um, in Munich. Yeah. Okay. So you started getting German clients. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing when you started getting the German clients? Were you still leaning heavily on your HR services? No. So yeah. Okay. So that's the other story is 
you know, I, while I was, you know, getting income in and working mm -hmm. on my bread and butter, which was recruiting in HR, I mm -hmm. built on my coaching skills. And that was really kind of a shift for me. It's like, ah, that's my zone, you know, mm -hmm. then it's like, ah, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do like full time. And that really makes me want to gives me so much energy. And then, you know, like, this is the right thing, right? Maybe I should put more energy into the coaching thing. And so I did that in parallel. So until I can actually build enough coaching clients to live off that. And so it kind of balanced itself out a little bit. So there was less HR, less recruiting, more coaching and that, that event transition. And then there was just too much work coming. And that's where I started reaching out to my network to see who else could take on the projects, you know, because I started being over flooded a little bit. Okay. Yeah. A good, good problem to have. Yeah, uh, better than the opposite problem. <laughs> so were you doing this all <clears throat> under the umbrella of Grow Better Together? Or were you mm. Genevieve Retzloff? Career coach? coaching. So okay. yeah, so I did these two umbrellas. They still both coexist mm -hmm. today. And I still get career coaching. So that would be more of a B2C business. Mm -hmm. So people mm -hmm. who are getting exactly where I was, right? Like they hit right. a wall. They're like, ah, I need a change, but I have no idea what's next. Mm -hmm. So there's so many, there's so many right now, like really this yeah. side of the business really continues to grow and go and do well. And I mainly help expats in Germany. So these oh, are where my clients same are. Same target market. How about that? Yes. Is there a dip? So, and then the HR recruiting is obviously that's corporate clients. So that's a B2B corporate. side and B2B. Is there a difference? Yeah. Is it harder to get the B2C client it's, or the b I just find this interesting because I run into people and like some people are just like, I need to bust into these corporate clients because it's more money and you yeah. just get these big jobs and other people that are like, that's easy money, but I really love working with individuals. But what is, what is the approach or what has worked for you to get the individual coaching clients and then the corporate clients? How is that different? well I don't find them in the same place that's for sure but now I found that I don't really want to compromise and mold to what the corporate it, what I had the impression what the corporate needs you know what I mean so as I said like we're working on this, this authenticity umbrella mm -hmm. so if there's a corporate who wants more of that and who really wants their leader to lead from an authentic place then we're the right address but if they want me to ask to, to coach their people so they can comply and be mm -hmm. better at sales or do, like yeah. I, I'm like I can't do fit. that yeah yeah it doesn't fit so ultimately it's almost like serving in the same way it's just a different audience that I that don't come from the same places does that make sense mm -hmm. and where do you find you said you find them in different places so where do you find where how do your individual coaches, mm. I guess. They come you? from all the expat platform. So I, I, I do some advertising in there and then the, I have a lot of referrals from there. So a okay. lot of people know that I'm doing HR coaching, so career <laughs> coaching, <laughs> coaching ah! <right> <laughs> career coaching. And yeah, so this kind of ripples on its own, okay. whereas the corporate clients, they come from the networking and, yeah. and the okay. marketing efforts we're putting in. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just asking this because a lot of people, the number one question I get is like, how can I get more clients and leads? So for people that are, I'm very curious for people like yourself who like have too much work, like how did you build that kind of business? So the advertising, I mean, we've talked about this before, but I know there's like the expat magazines and stuff, but did you do anything like Facebook ads? Or I was at a networking event the other night and everybody was like going on and on. And I don't want to, I got burned with Facebook ads. I don't want anything to do with them. <laughs> or was it just like on a couple of the expat network platforms? Yeah, just that. Okay. And I, I'm also, uh, it scares me, this whole ads thing. And this, yeah. like, I don't know, it's so outside of my comprehension zone. I don't yeah. understand it enough to say, oh, I'm going to invest in something I don't get. And yeah. even if people have explained it to me, it's like, it, it's I don't have the brain to understand how this works. And I don't need it because I don't yeah. need the, you know, the, the, pla the expat platforms, they, mm -hmm. they work well for me somehow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so what percentage would you say is like, of let's say your your coaching clients, what percentage mm -hmm. of them 
are word of mouth and what percentage come from the advertising ballpark? Mm, good question. Mm, maybe 20% from referrals and mm -hmm. word of mouth and the rest from the advertising. Really? Okay. That is, yeah. and do you, do you mind sharing like what platforms you're, I know one that you're advertising on. That's the only one. Oh, really? It's okay. A, yeah. It's, so I use, I am expat, but as I yeah. said, I think, so I, I mean, I don't want to oversell my, yeah. my stuff, but I feel really this transition, like about authenticity yeah. is really something that appeals to people somehow, because I really get, so for, I don't know, 10 discovery calls, I will have eight signups or okay. seven, some months like it, it's, but it's like, I don't know, it feels like this service comes at the right time, maybe on the market, but uh, I mean, it might just be myself uh, sending myself flowers. I don't know, but <laughs> no, um, it's, it sounds like it's probably a combination of you have a, a tight niche. Yeah. And an offer that is right for the moment and the niche that, and I a place so. and a clear advertising place. I would, I mean, that sounds yeah. like what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a combination of all, I guess. Okay. So, okay. So now you've got basically two brands. So you're, yeah. you're Genevieve Retzloff coaching and grow better together and, but grow better together. You're, it sounds like you're fusing more of the coaching into Grow better, grow better together, together. Okay. yes yes so there's grow better together is not only now the hr consulting and recruiting mm -hmm. the way it was at the beginning but there's a lot of leadership programs leadership development also i i in between all that i got certified as a team coach so really bringing teams to ask real questions of themselves and find more better ways to work together towards more performance so there's that added to the mix and right now we're really focusing a lot on female leadership somehow mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. because it, the more we do coaching, the more we realize like female leadership could be the answer to this need for authenticity and sense of belonging because what people need right now is all of these things, right? Teamwork, flexibility, collaboration mm -hmm. instead of competition and and this seems to be very much linked to what the female typical female leadership qualities could offer. But at the same time, we see that female leaders are like not embracing them. They're like saying, no, it's okay. Like we don't want to take, either they don't want to take too much space or they're not giving the space or there's kind of a tension there, but the world really needs more of, of those people. And so how do we kind of fill the gap? And so this is where we come in. Does that? Yeah, that makes total <laughs> sense. Like what are some of the, I mean, is it, is, is that the, the main problem is that women leaders are feeling hesitant to step into their power as leaders or they're not or they're waiting for opportunities or some are ready to but are blocked it's a it's a mix and it's yeah. very individual but we i mean the thing is while working with female leaders we hear all of these things you know this imposter mm -hmm. syndrome we talk yeah. about I, you know, flexibility, they, they have their families, but they're right. asked like, so they, they want to be, they want to have a fulfilling career, but they don't want to compromise on their kids. So they overperform kind of everywhere. And so they get yeah. exhausted. Yeah. Uh, it could, I mean, it's a combination of everything, but it's all the same narrative. So that's why yeah. we thought, why don't we just bring them all together? And then they will yeah. mobilize their situation. See, okay, I'm mm -hmm. not alone. They build a community around these events and they have some sort of accountability buddies in the long run. Yeah. Do you find, I just, I just be curious to know, I've been, I've been out of corporate for 10 plus years, so I don't have real insight into this, but from my vantage point, I always feel like there are, there's more of these kinds of things in North America mm -hmm. than there are in Europe. Like they're just, every time I look across the ocean, there's like, I don't know, Elvis or all these networks that I don't see here, but maybe it's because I'm, you know, I'm, you know, in English speaking spaces or whatever, but yeah, yeah. do you find Germany and Europe <laughs> in a different place than America and Canada? Well, I'm like you, like I'm a bit hesitant to make that statement because it yeah. might be out of my uh, just ignorance about the yeah. local market, but yeah. I find the same, like I find it's a lot more of a 
like a regular thing in the in North America than it is here. So I don't know if it's because I'm I'm not aware, but it you know knowing also yeah. seeing the business that comes in, I'm thinking oh well maybe we have something going on here that you know doesn't exist so much you know so I don't yeah know. that's that's a good point are so are most of the people that you're working with grow to and grow better together are they German organizations or clients or they're, everywhere. they're both I okay would say almost half and half now really yeah okay so you do a lot of the work then remotely yeah like yeah. all or no and because that's the other reason you know like in getting off my business you have like such pride when people want your services that you just think like oh i just want to perform and make that client happy and mm -hmm. so i was finding myself like totally not keeping my own balance which is something mm -hmm. i help people gain you know that yeah. it's just totally ironic. shoemaker's kids <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah and that's when i was like i don't want to say no to this business but i also am sick of working evenings so yeah. how do i you know solve that tension and that's when i started talking to people in my network who could take on these clients and be part of something bigger okay so in other words kind of shifting more of your clients to european based german based clients yeah exactly then i, I can work more in the days and yeah yeah i know i have that too like when i take on web projects for people on the west coast and i still get a lot of west coast it's like and i do those because it's in a day i start at four and i finish them at 11 p.m oh my and god and i'm yeah. just like i have got to like really shift to europe because i mean i can do it but it's i don't love doing it yeah, speaking yeah. of while we're talking about i know from working on your site that you <laughs> have a very global team yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you, well, actually two questions. So grow better together is, I mean, is that, is it like a loose constellation of freelancers and contractors or did you have to get like a Gambeha or like what, what's the legal setup of mm, that? That's a good question. And that was kind of a huge debate in my mind before yeah. I came to that conclusion, but I, I went for the let's create a team of consultants and, and mm -hmm. freelancers that mm -hmm. work on their own, but mm -hmm. have the same values and purpose. And, you know, I need to also walk my talk. So mm -hmm. I just gathering people who are like minded to mm -hmm. just offer services that not in the same way that I do it. Obviously, everybody has their own way, but that they believe in the same outcome. So yeah, that was I mean, that's part of the challenge too, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they have all their own thing going on too. And right. so then this is where I think I need to exercise what I teach my clients about strong leadership that is value and purpose driven and say, mm -hmm. well, so then they have kind of the purpose and the values as a lighthouse and say, oh, mm -hmm. we're doing this together because otherwise like it's. I can't hold on to them if I don't have anything for them to to hold on to. Do you know, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like so, mm -hmm. yeah. So that that really makes me practice a lot of my own leadership skills and say, well, let's all be on the same boat and steer the boat together. So with the right people in the same in the right position, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the right motivation, then you can really steer a boat. So then I know it kind of works now that is actually happening and so people still want to work with me based on the mission and the the values okay but then practically and i have like self-interest in this question because i'm connecting with a lot of kind of strategic partners that i with brand photographers right. copywriters brand managers so if you get a big project you can kind of work together as a collective, but you have this loose constellation where you all have your own things going, but you can get yeah. together. But then it's like, is everybody ready, available at the same time? Like, how does that work? You get an engagement and then, oh, well, I don't have any available. <coughs> how do you manage that just practically? Well, it works on really good faith and commitment, honestly. And so that's why I would say building the right team is yeah really key because if you you have people who lose motivation or who don't prioritize the same way you prioritize well that's that's there's a clash right so 
that's the constant challenge a little bit is to keep people motivated and interested enough in what you do so they mm -hmm. feel like they're involved and they're part of something you know yeah that's logistically i guess that's the yeah. thing and, and to just to the, the the time where just to meet sometimes like we this thread yeah. of emails <laughs> like i'm available this and oh this doesn't yeah, work for yeah. me this doesn't work for me and like so again that means evening work for me and yeah. super early morning work for them and right yeah right yeah it's tricky and just like the what the kind of work you're doing is it asynchronous enough that it's not like you all have to be running a workshop at the same time and that's how you can mm -hmm. work together? Well, we're testing it now, like with yeah. the female leadership retreat that's coming uh -huh. up in May, right? Like, so Carmen, who works with us as a, who's part of the team, she's based in the US and she's gonna come to Austria for this retreat. So this is the first time we're actually testing out the togetherness. Yeah. Otherwise we're more like, brainstorming together I have this client I have this project like how can we make this work and then one of us will propose and one of us will run the workshop but we kind of all chip in with our whole backgrounds and just to make this a product ah, okay. for the client and then this is reusable by other team members like we, we all came together we build it and uh -huh. then I can reuse it with my own clients so it, it's kind of a platform to share oh cool yeah. what is yeah. it in this case well, in the case of the, for example, do you mean the product? Yeah, like just I'm not being familiar with, you know, your industry beyond being in the receiving end of like events when I was at a company. Like what is, is it a type of workshop or a facilitation methodology or like what is it? Yeah, so we all do, for example, individual coaching. One person does recruiting, so she's kind of an, an island on her own. Mm -hmm. And we do HR consulting. So if we have, for example, HR consulting, aligning business strategies with people's strategies, right? It's something we mm -hmm. love to do. Um, mm -hmm. But we have, there's me as an HR expert. There's another guy in Munich, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this Carmen, who's in the U.S. So mm -hmm. we find a time we come together and say, well, this client base in the U.S., which is going to be Carmen delivering that, mm -hmm. okay. that service, then let's all come together and build a, a, a product, like something mm -hmm. that we agree on a strategy, but one person will implement it. Okay, know, so it's like an offering or a package, sort of for whoever. Yeah, so it's just an is. example, okay. but it's okay. the kind of thing. But everybody who does coaching, they do coaching on their own, like se separately. Okay, coaching one on one is a different story. It's just for okay. group things. Yeah. And I get it. So it's like you know, obviously, whatever business problem one person encounters, the others will likely encounter it with another client, and then you have that in your toolbox and say, "Oh, we're just gonna do yeah. one of these again." Exactly. Uh, got it. Okay, that's cool. I have, again, another question or begged all these. Oh, yeah. This is kind of nitty gritty business stuff, but I am curious. So if you're kind do, so this example you just gave me, does Carmen run the whole thing under her own brand or under no. Grow Better Together? Under Grow Better Together. Okay. That's the idea. So we use kind of the brain power under Grow Better Together okay. and this belongs. But then if she wants to use it under her own brand, then we sit down and we say, how are we fine with that? Are we okay? Yeah. And okay. You know, this is kind of a, another discussion. Yeah. Okay. So everybody kind of brings in clients and you work collaboratively under your brand. Yeah. That's the idea. Okay. okay. That is really cool. Are there any yeah. challenges or lessons learned with getting Grow Better Together started? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a couple. You know, everybody encounters some challenges <laughs> yeah. in the self-employment world. <laughs> but I would say, okay, so this is <clears throat> me making a huge realization when mm -hmm. part of the big reasons why I wanted to leave corporate was I was just sick of just like having yeah. always work on my mind and I mean, it's not the only reason, but it was a good chunk of the reason. And that's why I was like, oh, let me take that ticket for change. But then I was just busy, like all the time, like working and working long hours and delivering a sane amount of work in a short amount of time. And and then when I, I thought self-employment is my key to getting out of that. And 
and, and then I realized like when you have, as I said, like there's this big proud moment of like, yeah. oh, people want to buy my services, yeah. which is me. Like it's my brand and it's like, it's, it's, you know, you feel good. And then you start like picking up work and then the more it's becoming successful, the more you end up working also like a dog and, and the more I ended up working like a dog, then I thought, it wasn't really corporate that was doing this to yeah. myself, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. me creating this for myself, and and so this is when like huge realization of like okay, and then I had to practice what I I preach, right? Like I had to work on my own self leadership because it's part of me, like that's part of who I am because of you know whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. But then I always have still to this day to pay attention. Like so much that I work with the mindfulness coach. And that is Kate Greensdale. She's amazing. You can only okay. recommend her, but it's really okay. to self-leadership, right? Self-regulate, seeing like, okay, I feel like I'm going like <laughs> into the day. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't I don't like this feeling. Like I just need to find new ways of doing the same. And I'm so much more productive. That's the ironic part where you like feel like I should do more. Mm -hmm. But when you actually find ways to be more mindful about how yeah. you work, then you produce a lot better results and more productive somehow. Anyway, so that's yeah. what I lesson learned. It's like corporate is not going to solve any all of your problems if you leave corporate, right? Like it's... Yeah, I would just say for me, the difference was... Yeah, because I... <laughs> I, w I love working. I love it. I would work until I drop. <laughs> it's like yeah. I, if I didn't have my <laughs> husband and kid and dog, I would just do it around the clock. The difference mm. to me is I just care about this more. And when I was at corporate, there was a lot yeah, of stress matters. and a lot of anguish. And it all for me seemed for nothing I cared about at all. And yeah. that is where it was depleting instead of energy giving. It was like, yeah. it felt like a waste of my life rather than... Now that doesn't mean like going the way you can go when it's your own business. You do, I do sometimes like I have to stop because at some point you also just have diminished productivity because yeah. you're just like, Bleh. but yeah. it wasn't so much for me about the volume of how much I worked. It was like the meaning and the feeling behind like why I was. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, it changes everything, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. the that should be a good driver for you to become yeah. self-employed, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That should be the only one, basically, almost. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know, but the the, the self flexibility and work life balance is you can only create it for yourself, even when you have your own business. I guess that's my biggest challenge and lesson learned. Yeah. Yeah. And what would you is there anything you wish you knew before you started? Yeah, I, like, sorry, I'm just thinking for a long time, but I guess it's more, don't sweat the small stuff. It's all going to be fine. And just see this as an experiment. Like you're not a failure mm -hmm. if it doesn't work because self-employment is really not made for everyone. And it's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. totally okay. Because whatever you built in your past, it remains with you you have a baggage you have skills that are not going to go away if this business fails you know and it's fine and i guess if i started with that mindset i i think i would have saved myself a lot of stress and anxiety and all mm -hmm. that comes with the self-employment it's like it's fine like just try it just try just, it just roll with it yeah yeah a family friend gave me some good advice when i was really young i think i was starting out at art school and I was really like, oh, what if I don't want to do this rest of my life? Blah. And she just said, nothing is wasted. Nothing yeah. is wasted. Nothing's exactly. a waste. It'll all go into the rest of your life in some form or another. And I found yeah. that to be such a good touchstone. Yeah. And then any any guidance you would give to fellow or aspiring business owners, expat business owners in Germany? Yes. I would say surround yourself with the right people. Mm. Aim for only quality people. I call mm. it OQP. <laughs> only quality people. OQP. I even have a name. Are you down right? with yeah. OQP? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's say just trust your gut. If you're yeah. lost in your thought, get a coach. It's really helpful. Like it will yeah. really help you gain clarity and you won't feel the overwhelm that you're feeling. Outsource your weaknesses. Don't think you should be good at everything. And I guess that's. It's my word of wisdom and advice. <laughs> okay. 
And <laughs> you, you mentioned retreat. You want to tell me a little bit more about this? Oh, yes, this is like the most exciting. As I said, like it's all, all the work I've done in my career so far has led to this moment. It's kind of a big milestone moment for Grow Better Together because it's our first retreat based on all the experiences we had with women leaders. And so we're building this female leadership retreat. It's going to be amazing in the Austrian Alps in the area of Lermos, just like 20 minutes past Garmisch, if you're familiar with the area. And yeah, we're just very excited about it. There's only 12 spots available. And so check it out and okay. let me know if you have any questions and registration closes on April 18th. So okay. yeah, just ping me if you have any questions, if you're interested, that would be amazing. Okay. And where can people find you? They can find me on LinkedIn. I can, you know, I'm sure you'll share the, the links. Yeah. You can yeah. find my company, Grow Better Together on LinkedIn as well as a company page and also by email. Okay. And that's growbettertogether.com or .de? It's grow-better-together.com. Yeah. Okay. Awesome website, by the way. Yes, <laughs> thanks to you. Oh my God, I got so many compliments on that website that Anor, you can't even imagine. It was, oh, it's such a cool website. Really. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I got to stop doing that. All right. Well, Jen, thank you so much for talking thank with you. me today. I got a lot out of this conversation, and I'm hoping our listeners will as well. And if people have any questions, you know where to reach Jen. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Ciao. My pleasure. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find this episode and all other episodes of the Germany Expat Business Show at my website at www.eleanormeyerhofer.com slash podcast. That's www.eleanormeyerhofer.com slash podcast. See you next time.